I would like to speak um, about inquiry, or if, uh, if we're good Christians, we might call it contemplation. And so in order to understand uh, these things, you know, this practice, I'm going to first invite you just to notice that there's something here that's innocent and awake, and it hears the sound of the breeze. So there's something here right now that's innocent and awake, that hears the sound of, you know, a palm tree in the wind. And it takes no effort, like zero effort. So there's something here right now that's quietly, innocently awake. And so this presence, this is what the Buddha called awareness, true nature. It's always here, always already here. So simple. So direct so fundamental and essential to our nature. That we forget it's here. And so we're just noticing this. That there's something here that's awake already. It's awake to the sound of my voice, a barking dog, a palm tree blowing in the ocean breeze. It's pure, non judgmental, soft, allowing. I would tell you to find this place, but it's here. It's already awake. And so in regards to contemplation, inquiry, first we contact this space. just innocently, open-heartedly awake. If you can just realize this, it's a big deal. By realizing it, I mean to step into it. Not to imagine that the thinking mind is who you are, but rather to directly experience yourself as innocence. Innocent, awake awareness. <laughs> Has no problem, no judgment. It's full and complete in and of itself, in and of yourself. That's so beautiful. So we, <laughs> we start to see this. 
and say, yes, of course, of course. And then from this space of just gently listening, seeing, perceiving, the same way we're hearing the sound of the breeze, the palms blowing in the wind, I invite you to look at your human self, your human character, your heart, your heart especially. And if you're not immediately overwhelmed by your beauty <laughs> and your goodness, I encourage you to ask, what is here that's covering my heart? What's here that's foreign? So this is the contemplation. This is the inquiry. If we do inquiry from mentality, then we're just thinking. We're not playing the thinking game. You step into the space of innocence that you are. The space that hears the sound of the breeze. And then if you look at this human heart of yours and you don't see absolute beauty, <laughs> radiance, Christ-like love, You just ask, well, what's here? Well, what's covering my heart? No judgment. Just gently seeing, noticing. What's covering my heart? What's veiling it? What's masking it? And if a judge or a critic enters the room, or a Freudian analyst, Just gently ask again from a place of innocence. What's veiling my heart? Just gently be curious. And so we're curiously looking at the heart, embracing the heart. might even take it a step further because this innocence that you are is also tenderly compassionate. If you see something in the center of your chest which is suffering, you might ask, what do you need? 
What do you need? Hey, little buddy. Hey, little girl. What do you need? How can I help? Is there something you want to show me? <laughs> An old memory, a pain? Is there some tears or heartache? What's here? What do you need? What do you need? And this space of innocence, it's big. It's vast. It's gentle. It's precise. Nothing in your heart is too big for this space. No wound or pain that you carry is too big. Just like no sound is too big for awareness. There's space. There's space. So you're just breathing, feeling. Softening. Daring to look. Daring to ask. What do you what do you need? How can I help? Giving yourself full permission to see, to feel, to experience. What's here? What's here? Is there something that needs to be forgiven? Someone? Yourself? <laughs> Does yourself need to be forgiven? Well, I can tell you what Jesus told you. You are forgiven. <laughs> child of the Most High. You're the Buddha. So we're breathing, feeling, and just allowing whatever wants to come. This space of innocence radically allows, radically allows all your feelings. You don't have to contain them within you in a little ball. And call that condensed ball your heart. That's not your heart. <laughs> That's your pain. Can you breathe, feel, open? And for some of you, it may help to relax your throat ch chakra, relax your belly. Sometimes we unconsciously clench our throat when we see something, hear something uncomfortable. 
Sometimes we clench the belly. Now what's here that's begging to be loved, begging to be seen? What's here that we've carried for a couple decades? A couple decades that just wants to be loved. What's here? What's here? Sometimes the mind comes forward and wants to get involved. The critic, the judge, the analyst. You can just smile at those three. Say it's okay. You know. We don't need a judge today. We can relax. A judge can relax. Judge can relax, the critic can relax. So we're breathing, feeling, experiencing, open hearted. This space is big enough. It's big enough. You give yourself permission to be humble. Humble, innocent, open. We don't have to be afraid of feeling. And so we're breathing, feeling, opening. Letting it come, letting yourself see what's here. What's here? So I'm going to encourage you to stay with this question. What's here in my heart? What's here? What's veiling my immaculate beauty, innocence? What's here? And so, you're welcome just to gently open your eyes if you have them closed. And so, sometimes when we come into this world, we have a tough run at it. And we pile all these things on our heart, or they get piled on us. And so we walk around with a lot of emotion inside. You know, on this path, the tantric path, we allow emotion, we invite emotion. We let it come, we let it empty out of us. It's a good thing. 
as a human being, as a mammal, our bodies are wired to emote, to let go when there's pressure, to shake or tremble or emote. You know, like if we were a dog, we, if we had a lot of emotion in us, we might shake or we might bark, we might whine, we might whimper. So part of opening up to the hugeness of what we are is giving ourselves permission to shed some of those layers, to shed them. In this culture, uh, we've gotten really uncomfortable with emotions and emoting. And so if it's not normal for you, uh, just relax, breathe. No, it's, it's normal <laughs> when we're humans to let things flow. It's abnormal to keep everything in. It's abnormal. It's not helpful to keep everything within you. You end up going crazy. <laughs> like People keep everything in. We end up going crazy. So it's good to release, to let go, to empty out. Empty out. So I encourage you all just to continue to sit with this question. What's covering my heart? What's there? What's covering the heart? What's veiling my consciousness? You know, what's veiling? Does someone, something need to be forgiven? And so as we sit with this question, you know, sometimes the release will come out in lots of emotions and tears. Sometimes you'll just be seated there and you'll just feel a heaviness empty out of you. You might find all of a sudden your mind is really crisp and alive and awake. Your heart is all of a sudden radiant. You know, after you see an old painful memory float through your consciousness, it's met with love and forgiveness, and then all of a sudden the heart is full of love, full of love. And so we invite this. And it, it can be messy, you know. Sometimes, you know, we might bounce around a little bit. We might hack. We might have mucus pouring out of our nose. You know, I've been a bubbling mess uh, more times than I can count. <laughs> but when you trust, when your heart is open and you trust that I'm just letting go of something I don't need, then it becomes no big deal. It's like, oh, it's good to let go. If any of you ever had a good cry afterwards, you feel lighter. But somehow we've we forgot that in our culture. You know, we forgot it. And so we can smile a little bit about this very human, very divine predi predicament we're in. Where we are given this immaculate presence. So pure, so good, so whole, so complete. And then we have an animal body, you know, that <laughs> sometimes is like a dumping ground for storage place for old emotions and pain or guardedness or heaviness or it's a funny setup it's a silly setup confusing setup it's a messy setup the path so 
So it's okay if it's messy. The more comfortable you are with the mess of being human, the more comfortable comfortable you are with your emotions, the more quickly they'll release. The more quickly they release. Then we begin to discover what the Buddha meant when he said, your nature is empty, empty, spacious, free, free. It's hard to be free if we're walking around with 8,000 pounds of unconsciousness within us. It's hard to be free. if we're full of the past. And so what's here? That hears the sound of the birdie. What's here? This innocence, was it ever harmed? By all the pain, the trauma, the sadness you've experienced here on planet Earth, this innocence. Was it ever defiled by your busy work life? Or is it not just as pure as the day you were born? Is it not just as pure as the day you were born? 